Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Marketing 101. This week we got a very special guest, Lindsay Kratzer from uh, Simple, nope, <laughs> from Spark Health Advisors. That's awesome. Uh, this is going to be a very unique one. So for people interested in getting to reach your community properly, uh, she's going to have some great tips on that. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be yeah. here. Yeah, let us know. Uh, how'd you get into all this? How did you uh, first start with uh, this type of a career? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I've actually worked in the healthcare industry on the business side um, for many, many years um, in a number of different roles. So I've done everything from strategic account management to business development to growth strategy, product strategy, and then kind of ultimately go to market strategy. Um, and I've worked on a number of different um, primary care products, um, virtual digital health products as well. Um, so have a lot of exposure to a lot of different areas of the industry. Um, and then about a year and a half ago, um, I thought, you know what, like, it'd be fun to just do this working with um, early stage companies or growth straight stage companies, um, individual practices um, that are looking to really kind of target employers. So a lot of my experience is working with large Fortune 1000 employers um, and kind of that ecosystem that surrounds them. So started Spark Health Advisors um, about a year and a half ago, and it's been a really, really fun and rewarding experience. I've Love being able to work with you know people that I really connect with and that, um, that I respect what they're doing in their businesses and develop those really close relationships. And then it works for me on the personal side too. You know, I love uh, the flexibility, and I've got a three year old, and it's just a nice a nice lifestyle. So I really really enjoyed um, enjoyed starting this business. Great, that's awesome. Uh, what so I mean, times have changed since COVID. You know, it's been a, mm -hmm. a long journey. I can't believe it's four years now. It feels like mm -hmm. uh, fifty. <laughs> how long it was, but, but what, what's the most common thing nowadays in the workforce, especially for employers that are mm -hmm. the biggest challenges that you're seeing, uh, with the workforce, it seems mm -hmm. two sided here. You get two different perspectives on it. One, no one wants to work and the other one, there's not enough jobs and you're getting mm -hmm. like both. So what do you see? Yeah. I mean, I think COVID changed a lot of things from a healthcare perspective, um, obviously. So um, when COVID happened, I um, was working um, primarily on a product that was delivering care physically. Um, and that was obviously very challenging um, since it was kind of in the primary care world. So we quickly had to pivot to delivering uh, virtual care. And I think that since COVID has happened, there's obviously been a huge explosion of digital and virtual um, solutions that are out there um, that, you know, all different types of buyers are looking for, including employers. Um, I think employers, you know, they continue to struggle, um, especially the self-insured ones with really high costs, right? Like, you know, for your audience, MSK, uh, musculoskeletal is always one of the top cost drivers for employers. And they're really looking for ways to bring down those solutions and then also engage their employees too. With kind of the explosion of digital health solutions, um, there's been really low engagement from employee populations. So solutions that can really kind of drive utilization and ongoing engagement um, are much more successful. Um, and those are kind of the solutions that are really kind of like winning out, getting their contracts renewed, um, companies that are growing with kind of this employer base. That's great. Yeah, I've seen that too. I mean, as a solo provider, I mean, there's the um, demand for work for people. And then also just the recruiting process has changed quite a bit as well. Mm -hmm. People have definitely a longer laundry list and what they're looking for in work too. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> to meet all those parameters, parameters as an employer has been challenging from my perspective, but as uh, looking for work, I'm sure there's challenges that come with that as well. Mm -hmm. um, I like how this intertwines with uh, chiropractors specifically, but even health providers is um, with what you do is, is a cool perspective that I think a lot of us have tried to, especially myself, have tried to get into the corporate world with bigger companies, medium to large size businesses uh, to maybe help them with some of their wellness protocols or wellness procedures. And um, there's a lot of challenges that come with that. One is the initiation of trying to get to the right person, mm -hmm. then convincing them that this is a good decision. And then once you're there, I found that the systems and procedures have to be quite solid in order to maintain that relationship where I had failed as time went on because of systems and procedures. So maybe we can go through some of that and how you help providers mm -hmm. Uh, develop those systems and procedures. What do you feel is the first way to kind of engage with employers in your local community um, mm -hmm. to build a relationship? 
Yeah, I mean, I think that there's huge demand for this. Um, you know, I have worked um, actually with companies in the past to provide um, chiropractic solutions on site um, or in the community as well. Um, and I think a lot of times it's nice, you know, if they can have kind of a packaged MSK product and maybe, you know, for some of your audience, uh, they would have some opportunities to maybe work with other solutions that are there at the local um, businesses um, or employers. So I think a lot of time when you want to work with some of these local businesses, it's important to kind of understand some of their challenges to start with. So, um, you know, as you mentioned, um, hiring is obviously a challenge for a lot of companies and then, you know, recruitment and retention. So, you know, offering more solutions, um, whether it's the um, access to these services on site or in the community can be, you know, really, really beneficial um, in helping to differentiate a company from kind of their um, competitors that are out there. Um, there's obviously certain types of businesses that are going to have um, workforces um, that may struggle more with MSK challenges because of the nature of their job. So kind of understanding those nuances when you're talking to, um, to the employer would be really important. And for a lot of larger employers, the decision um, for different services may be made, you know, kind of from a benefits team member. So an HR leader um, in benefits, perhaps from a headquarter location, but they also have decisions that are made at more of the regional uh, location as well. So I think it's really understanding, like, what does that business look like from more of a national or an international footprint and making sure that you're kind of talking to the right people. Um, if it's perhaps a smaller business that's a small to medium sized business, um, one other thing that would be really important to understand is, you know, are they fully insured or are they self-insured? Those companies that are self-insured, they're going to be taking the financial risk on themselves and more and more small and medium sized businesses are moving that route um, to better control their healthcare costs. So if you can you know, put together a program and approach these employers and talk about how you can save them money and drive a better employee experience um, by um, delivering, you know, the care that's needed to kind of address some of their MSK challenges. And you can talk about the results that you can drive, um, then you're more likely to, to really kind of get their ear and kind of perk up um, their interest. That's great tips. I mean, having your stats um, in place can play a big role there, too, on how you know, back pain, I mean, chiropractors have been pretty much the leaders in back pain and work for you. We know that 85% of all people are going to experience enough back pain to actually take them enough time to take off work. So lost time from work mm -hmm. because of back related issues is 85% of all employees will go through that, which is an alarming, crazy number that mm -hmm. <clears throat> is always my first, you know, 30 second elevator pitch to an HR person of a company is, and that, that usually gets me a conversation with them. So that's a great one to start with, but actually having a plan to help these companies with their employees uh, could be a phenomenal thing. And I think that's where you come in to help out. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I've done a lot of work in that space, um, both with kind of more of the SMB um, types of employers, as well as kind of the larger Fortune 1000 employers as well. So yeah, I think it all goes back to like having a strategy and then being able to kind of illuminate what the problem is to your point. Um, and anytime you can do that in both a quantitative and a qualitative perspective, that's always great. So making sure that like you have some numbers to back you up, because ultimately a lot of the employers that are looking for, you know, some sort of a hard dollar ROI, if you can provide that. But then they also have this whole employee experience piece um, where they're thinking about the employees and their families. And they want to make sure that they're getting them the care that they need um, and really, you know, driving kind of overall satisfaction with the employer um, from uh, the individual's perspective. So and I think the other thing that's really important, too, is a plan to actually engage those employees. So like I mentioned earlier, a lot of companies um, that are delivering solutions to employers don't necessarily have a really strong um, plan for how they're going to engage people. Um, so thinking through that on the front end can be really important. Um, and the employer can be a, a really good partner in helping you with that. That's great. Great strategies there. So when we want to work with someone like you, let's say uh, mm -hmm. myself, a healthcare provider, wants to hire on Spark Health Advisors, and how does that relationship look? So how do we get started? What's mm -hmm. your role in this game? Do you do all the groundwork and we just show up? Or how, mm -hmm. how much of a mixed involvement is there? 
Yeah, I think that we are a little bit unique um, at Spark Health Advisors. So what we do is we not only offer the kind of advisory strategic work, but we also do the tactical support as well. Um, so really, we can provide kind of a centralized turnkey solution for all of your sales and marketing needs um, going after the employer space. Um, so we can kind of work with you to put together what's going to what that go to market plan is going to look like um, based on kind of those key goals that you have. We always start with like what you're trying to accomplish and then try to work from there. So we can put together the plan, but then we, we can actually execute on it as well. So we do that in the form of, you know, kind of leading campaigns um, to outreach to targeted um, employer groups, um, making sure that you're kind of getting networked and meeting the right people from a broker and a consultant perspective or other partners. Um, and then we um, actually support with um, actually developing out some of that marketing collateral you might need, as well as supporting from a sales perspective as well. So making sure that you really have kind of a dialed in value proposition and that you're communicating that effectively to your target audience. So that's, that's phenomenal. So that's like a ground up strategy, even if you're getting started in this sector. So you may not be new to practice, or even if you are new to practice, this might be a great strategy to implement right off the bat to just get your hands busy uh, mm -hmm. right off the bat. Right. So you, so it almost sounds like a startup type thing uh, working with you, which you guys have. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. and then you can implement this into a veteran type practice as well, too. It'd be just the startup of a corporate wellness program in mm -hmm. your long lasting uh, service based business. So that's great. So, so you can help with both from the ground up. Now, what if, um, so th that answers my, my next question of like, if you don't have any ties to any corporations, then mm -hmm. I would call up Lindsay and be like, Hey, here's my, here's my area. And I'm sure you would do some research, figure it all out. Mm -hmm and strategize on who to target and how to target and how much mm -hmm. to target. That's fantastic. Now, what if we have ideas of businesses that we've wanted to work with who maybe we haven't been able to get through the door? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we can help with both things. I think that it's important to kind of build kind of the top of funnel um, so we can help with that. But we can also help with um, those identified prospects or conversations that you're already having um, that, you know, have maybe hit an inflection point and they're not necessarily, you know, moving in the direction that you want to do. Um, so we work with a lot of companies on kind of uh, helping them to understand what the employer's buying process looks like and then aligning their sales process to map to what that buying process would look like. So, you know, if you're having a hard time um, once, you know, proposals go out there and they're sitting kind of out there in the ether and nothing's happening with them, um, that's something that we could really kind of like dial into and try to understand what are the challenges that you're facing there. And I think, again, a lot of it goes back to making sure that you have a really strong value proposition um, that's differentiated as well um, for the specific audience that you are um, targeting and that you can show some sort of an ROI, whether that be hard dollar or soft dollar, but it all needs to be integrated into a package. Great tips there. Perfect. So that's that's kind of the bone structure of how this all works. Um, what have been the pain points that you've had working with clients uh, that have been the toughest hurdles for you to uh, to get through with some of your tough clients? And then I'll ask the opposite. You know, what's the great points? But answer the first mm -hmm. one. Like, what's what's your ideal client? Who's your ideal client? Yeah, no, that's super helpful. Um, so ideal client, you know, we work primarily with digital health companies or with um, some of the regional or larger uh, provider practices. Um, so those would typically be our um, ideal clients. Um, typically, it's going to be companies that are going after that employer audience. So as mentioned, that's really um, where my partner and I have really deep expertise is working with employers, whether that's the SMB side or kind of the larger Fortune 1000 audience. Um, in terms of challenges, you know, I think that a lot of people say, oh, we need, you know, more leads. We need to close more business. We need all of these things to happen now. Um, and sometimes companies just aren't super excited about doing some of the legwork that's required in order to perhaps like figure out why, you know, they're not seeing the success they need and make sure that they have kind of the right message and value prop and the competitive differentiation and all of those sorts of things thought through on the front end. Um, so, you know, it's a bit of a process. Um, I think when I started this, I was perhaps, you know, pushing a little harder on that side. And, and now we try to meet companies with where they're at. Um, so we want to understand kind of where you're at and then see if we can like work to make incremental change um, and and then kind of, you know, expand the relationship from there. So we do that a lot. That's great. 
Um, you answered both questions. That's the idea <laughs> to work with. That is awesome. What are some um, what are some things in the industry that you see are going for? Like obviously virtual. You said that at the very beginning. Virtual practice has taken off. I mean, COVID has pretty much opened the doors to that. Um, well, where do you where do you see healthcare going as far as far as uh, an employer perspective mm-hmm. in the next five to ten years? Where do you see uh, a lot of the eggs? Where should we be putting our eggs in which baskets, and uh, mm-hmm. what trends are looking up? Yeah, I think with the explosion of virtual and digital care, and a lot of just different like point solutions, um, the employers have become a little bit inundated with solutions. Um, and then again, a lot of these don't necessarily drive the value that they would ideally want. So they're not necessarily seeing an ROI on these solutions. So a large employer could have 45 different point solutions that they're having to work with. And you can imagine that for like a typical HR buyer, that could be pretty overwhelming. So I think a lot of employers are looking to work with a smaller number of vendors and instead work with partners um, who are kind of bringing to together, um, you know, multiple different solutions. So think about kind of those aggregators that are operating in the space um, that are working to bring together multiple different solutions um, for employers. And so I think that trend is going to continue. Um, So it solves, you know, some of the contracting challenges and then some of the um, kind of point solution management challenges for um, those employers as well. Um, If you think about the employers, HR departments, normally pretty small, uh, they have a lot of different things they have to do. um, So it can be a little bit overwhelming. Um, So I think that a a smart strategy involves working with kind of those aggregators, whether they be like through health plans or kind of the more independent aggregators um, to reach employers. And then I think another strategy, um, another thing that's happening is, um, as I mentioned before, more and more you know, smaller, medium sized businesses are moving to being um, self insured so that they um, can really manage those costs um, of their, their healthcare costs for their organization themselves. Um, so I think that that trend is also very much continuing within the employer space. And then I think that employers are just getting smarter. I think that they're like, you know, more and more educated around, you know, some of the challenges that they have with their workforce and their population. And they're looking for innovation um, to really help solve for a lot of these challenges, but they want to do it in a scalable way that they can manage um, from an HR perspective. Great points. Yeah. From my perspective, that's from larger employers is uh, the traditional healthcare plans, most employees are not happy with it because I think most of us are just not happy with the healthcare system as it is. I mean, a PPO and copay and deductible, um, you don't really feel like you're really taking care of your health. Um, so if you're going to have to pay for it out of pocket anyways, mm-hmm. I think a lot of people are changing it. We've offered to our uh, business many times uh, health plans and they they deny them. They, everyone just says, no, I'd rather just keep 100% of my paycheck and choose my own health care. I'm like, that's mm-hmm. okay. That's, that's where I've noticed in the last five years. A lot of people are going. Uh, that's that's interesting, and I think there's an opportunity for healthcare providers like ourselves to really walk into the space and offer some really cool solutions, uh, and it may create some cool collaborative things. I remember one thing for me when I was working with some oil companies is, you know, I had one location, and it was in the northwest corner of the city. So, and the and the companies were all downtown. It was great. And for the one out of five people living in the northwest quadrant, they could follow up with me. But the other Mm -hmm. four out of five, it was too far of a drive. They weren't going to go an hour away. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe multiple location type offices. If you Mm -hmm. own more than one location in your area, that would be a great opportunity to Mm -hmm. try and get in with some local companies and call up Lindsay to help you just kind of fast track. You know, I bring these people like Lindsay onto the podcast to help you get from point A to point B a lot faster. I've learned after all the years that every time I try and walk from point A to point B, it just takes too long and I Mm -hmm. never get there. So when you have the right people with the right, you know, equipment, you'll get there a lot faster. So that, that's my tip there. So, I, I mean, I hope that lights some um, inquiry in, in the listeners to maybe give you a shout. And what's the best way to get a hold of you? I mean, do you do any consultations? Do you answer any questions at the beginning for free or maybe a kind of a discovery call? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, like I said, it's important to kind of understand the individual business and what they're trying to accomplish to start. So yes, I'll do kind of a free consultation, um, discovery call, um, and then kind of work with you to outline, you know, kind of what are those key goals that you're trying to achieve and then kind of share, you know, our perspective on how we can help get you there. Um, so that's kind of the, the process, but certainly uh, would be happy to talk to anybody. Um, our website is sparkhealthadvisors.com. Um, I have a partner as well um, who also has deep expertise in the employer space. So he and I work with all different types of businesses um, and just kind of love meeting new people, building new relationships, um, hearing about kind of their unique challenges as well. So That's great. I'll have all the handles in the, in the podcast itself, but uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, if you guys need to reach out to her, um, the web, go to the website or go directly to, are you, are you active on social media or LinkedIn? I am. Yeah. Yes. Great. LinkedIn, especially. So, uh, it's a great way to meet people from a business perspective. So great. We'll have all those tags there. Thanks for joining us. Have a great, uh, summer. Thank you. Thank you. You too. I appreciate the time. Of course.